JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for December the 30th. I am Haral Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or, invest or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar tumbled against all the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It lost the most ground versus NZD, SEC and OZ in that order, while it underperformed the least against the Canadian dollar. The weakening of the safe haven dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked currencies Kiwi and OZ suggests that markets traded in a risk-on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. That said, looking at the performance in the equity world, we see that, uh, uh, European, indices, that, that European indices traded mixed uh, within a 0.50% uh, range, with the only exception being UK's FTSE 100, which jumped 1.55% in the first day of trading after the sealing of, the, of, a, of a Brexit trade accord uh, last Thursday. In the US, all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices slid on average 0.27% each, but investors' appetite improved notably during the Asian trading today. Although Japan's Nikkei 225 retreated 0.45%, China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and South Korea's KOSPI gained 1.05, uh, 1.68, and 1.88% respectively. Now, on Monday, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to meet uh, President Trump's demand for $2,000 coronavirus, uh, coronavirus relief checks instead of the initial $600 uh, proposal, sending the measure on to the Senate, which convened yesterday. That said, the Champer, the Champer did not uh, vote on the matter, as Majority Leader uh, Mitch McConnell put off a vote, saying that they would, ad they would address the call during the week. The delay may have been the reason why market participants decided to lock some profits on U.S. equities, especially after all three of Wall Street's main indices hit new all-time highs on Monday. However, they may have had second uh, thoughts during the Asian session, as uh, the delay means that the Republican-controlled Senate is not immediately considering blocking the plan. The proposal needs 60 votes to pass, which means that 12 Republicans would have to bag it. Headlines suggest that at least five of them have so far voiced support, which means that there are decent chances for approval today or tomorrow. Maybe that's why Asian indices traded higher. Now, if the Senate votes in favor of the plan, uh, then equities could uh, drift higher, while the opposite may be true in case of a rejection. However, we don't expect a rejection-related retreat uh, to last for long. We would treat it as a corrective move in the broader upside path. In, order, in, excuse me, in other words, it may be a fresh opportunity for investors to buy equities at a lower price. Even with the $600 checks, the government's overall spending plan has been signed into law by President Trump on Sunday. Thus, we stick to our guns that the COVID vaccinations, the fiscal stimulus in the U.S., the Brexit Accord and the Biden, president, um, Biden presidency may continue benefiting risk assets while safe havens could stay under selling interest. This means that apart from equities, we could see decent gains in currency pairs consisting of a risk-linked currency and a safe haven, the likes of Aussie Yen, Aussie Dollar, Kiwi Yen, and Kiwi Dollar. Now, as uh, for today's events, besides any potential headlines surrounding the Senate vote, the only data releases to pay attention to are the U.S. pending home sales for November and the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. Pending home sales are expected to have rebounded 0.2% month-over-month after tumbling 1.1% in October, 
while the Energy Information Administration is expected to report a 2.583 million inventory fall after a 0.562 million slide the week, the week before. That said, bearing in mind that uh, yesterday the American Petroleum Institute revealed a 4.785 million tumble, we would consider the risks surrounding the, the Energy Formation Administration forecast as tilted to the downside. So a negative surprise could prove positive for oil prices. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.